Today is August 13th, 2023. We are looking at a solar powered beehive. Okay, so uh, the sun just came over the trees here from the east. And now it's high in the sky. It's a little after noon time. Got some flowers here that the bees don't seem too interested in, although hummingbirds are. But anyway, back to the solar powered beehive. All right, so. Let's start with the temperature in the hive here. It's about 98 degrees in there, which means our solar powered fans in the top box up here. It's got a thermostat that's set for 96 degrees. So I can feel a little bit of air movement. It's not gonna be a whole lot. It's only a five watt fan. It's just gonna help circulation and pull hot humid air up from the bottom of the hive. So once the fan pulls it up, it'll somewhat pressurize the roof and uh, force convection. We have white side shields on the south and west, and then black on the north and east. Okay, so solar power comes from four 70 watt panels, which are getting virtually full sun right now. And as the sun comes further over the trees, the panels will be fully illuminated. The power from the solar panels leaves out these uh, two conductor wires. We've got a 12.3 uh, volt charge and red light shows we have power. The blue light means that it's charging and this orange light, it's about half charged. So the full battery, totally black, they're under charging status. When that's fully black, it's fully charged. Same thing with that panel over there. And our charging wire goes under this mat. And the two wires come around and go right in that hole. Okay. And then the alligator clips connect to either the battery, or in this case, the battery and the uh, connections on the inverter. So DC to AC, this is a 3000 watt capacity inverter. We only have 280 watts coming in. So that's the limit at full solar ex exposure that this inverter will ever be able to put out. And I'm sure there's some loss there. So it might be more like 250 watts with these panels, maybe more. Uh, so anyway, we could put a whole bank of panels up to 3000 plus watts, have a battery bank that could absorb all that energy and store it. And uh, then we could power our refrigerator, maybe a microwave oven, a bunch of things up to 3,000 watts. There's a nice formula called PIE, P-I-E. All right, basic algebra, P equals power or watts. Okay, so watts equal I times E. So I is current in amps and E is electromotive force or voltage. Okay, so do basic algebra to figure out how many amps at a certain voltage a load will require in watts. And you can flip that around and solve for either watts, amps, or volts. Anyway, pi, it's a good formula to know. So we've got two batteries, one real big closed cell, 100% sealed lithium ion battery. And I've actually matched it up with this marine RV battery. And I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> Frankly, I didn't look it up. But anyway, I've done this before and have had no issues. Uh, I've powered up all kinds of batteries with this solar system. Okay, so right now I'm gonna unplug the hive from utility power, 120 volts, okay? And I'm gonna wait for the panels to uh, completely charge these batteries. Then I'm gonna plug, let's just do it right now. Take this cord, take the end, stick it in there. I'm going to plug this in to this end of the inverter and we'll turn it on as a switch to turn it on. And these lights will be illuminated 
when it's turned on. So why would I want to power a beehive in the first place? So I've got a temporary control box. Okay, I've got a new one in the queue to be produced. And I put it on there with Velcro, but it's not holding. So I've got it propped up with this can, which is empty. There's no denatured alcohol in there. We wouldn't want to be <laughs> putting flammable uh, fuel next to some alligator clips in case we jostled them and they arced together. That'd be stupid. But anyway, so I got these alligator clips. Uh, there are three, one for line, one for neutral, and one for ground. And what do those power? Plate heaters connect underneath the pan and make surface to surface contact. So this is 100 watts, not much. It doesn't require much because I've blocked off everything above the brood box. Because I've got an incredibly small colony in there. I'm rescuing the colony. When I rescued it, there were probably about 200 bees, including the queen. And that's just a guess. There were maybe four frames with a combination of honey, brood, and bees. And uh, not much nectar, not much pollen. The colony had dwindled to such low numbers that they were completely focused on protecting the queen and keeping her warm. And we had some very cold weather, down all the way to 50 degrees at night, in the 60s maybe, during the day with rain every day here up in New Hampshire. And anyway, the colony, or I should say the hive, was infested with an ant colony, which were robbing the bees of their production. Okay, so the colony could not grow because they didn't have food. The ants were eating it all, except for the capped honey. I want that queen to start laying, so I had to get her out of the 50, 60 degree temperature, given this very small colony. I brought them here north, 75 miles north, the edge of the White Mountains, and put them in there. Uh, I filled the pan with the heaters uh, up with glass bead, recycled glass. It's like sand. Okay, it's used for sandblasting. But it is glass, and it's an excellent thermal mass. So the 100 watts of electric heat heat up that mass, and that prevents short cycling, or on and off, on and off, on and off by the thermostat um, because of too little mass. We want to heat up all that mass and then inject heat periodically uh, with long uh, spans of time in between uh, the on-off cycle. So I've had this uh, hive set for 90 degrees. Uh, I should say the thermostat set for 90 degrees for over a week now. And for the first time yesterday, I saw a bee on a flower out front. And that might not so sound remarkable, but it is. <laughs> because it proves to me that the bees are leaving the, the hive because they don't have to constantly warm the queen. Uh, because it's already 90 degrees in there with a five degree differential. So between 85 and 90. And then today for the first time, I actually saw a bee come back with a, a haul of pollen on its legs. And that's not so remarkable in a typical colony, but it tells me that the bees are starting to get back to normalcy. And they can only do that because this hive is heated. You could not do this in a Langstroth hive, never ever. Number one, the 250 watt plate heaters, when they're energized, have a surface temperature of 300 degrees. You try doing that in a Langstroth hive, you'd burn the hive down along with the colony, and uh, that would be an inferno. Okay, but this hive, there are two deep and two medium and one wooden feeder box. Okay, so there's five wooden boxes in here, in there, all based on the Langstroth dimensions. Other than that, this hive, is surrounded 100% surrounded by stainless steel 316 stainless antibacterial food grade uh, that's what they use in restaurants and a lot of cooking utensils and whatever 316 stainless uh, and that's because it resists uh, bacteria and mold and things that could be pathogenic you don't want to poison your restaurant customers <laughs> And we don't want to poison our bees, and we don't want to foster the growth of anything in here. Mold, foul brood, any pathogens that might like to uh, infest, infect a uh, wooden structure. And the boxes in there are made out of sapele, a highly stable rainforest wood, so-called sustainably har harvested. It's extremely stable in varying temperatures. Doesn't move hardly at all. 
And those boxes are coated with a low VOC, volatile organic compound, Dextane. The Dextane obviously cured for many weeks before I put the bees in there. And usually when they are exposed to the elements, I coat the outside and the inside with a food grade paraffin wax. It paints on with a brush and then it congeals. So the inside of that is coated. The outside is not. And the reason being is we've got these side shields on to protect. And those are stainless steel, they're powder coated. Uh, and they're protecting the boxes. And uh, I made this hive so it's basically bear proof, it's weather proof, it's thief proof. Hence the padlocks, hidden shackle padlocks. You can't get those off unless you have a key or you're a locksmith. Uh, and I've got the temperature gauges on there because those gauges tell me a lot. Okay, it's now about 98 degrees down the bottom. And it's about 80 six degrees at the top okay so almost a eight to ten degree difference and that is because right above the brood box i have a feeder box wooden feeder box that is uh covered with eighth inch well, i should say the brood box is covered with eighth inch perforated 316 stainless and when i say eighth inch i mean the holes are eighth inch in diameter so the bees can't get up into the feeder box. I have a frame box full of sugar water, fortified, and they don't need to go into the wooden feeder box. Okay, so the feeder box is on top of the perforated stainless. And there are two two-inch holes in the feeder box. So really, those are just vent holes. Vent holes, uh, there are, these are, vent holes are venting the brood box so that fresh air can be pulled in through the entrance exit slots and CO2 from the bees and uh, stale air and excess humidity air can be drawn up through convection up through the uh, frame boxes on top of that feeder box. So yes, there are four frame boxes in here, but only the bees are only occupying one. The rest are isolated from the brood box because we don't want to heat up the whole hive. We just want to heat up the brood box. We don't want to waste electricity. And we all know that the sun isn't out all the time. So we don't want to drain our batteries and therefore have no power to the heaters and have fluctuating temperatures. We want to keep the temperatures as stable as possible in there with very little differential. We'll be using a new thermostat, better designed with only a two degree differential. So meaning if I set it for 90, it'll drop down to 88 and then kick back on as long as the thermostat is still calling for heat. And that all said, only the brood box, the bottom deep brood box is being heated. It's the only box that the bees are inhabiting because they only have four frames about 80% filled up. Six more frames plus in the deep brood box to uh, lay more eggs and to store more food. And once they fill up that box, I will know. I will see a lot more bees. And I'm hoping that in a week, we're going to see a whole new crop of bees that will push the uh, present housekeeping bees out into guard bees. And we will see them on the takeoff landing board and the awning above it. Okay, so I can't wait till that happens because then that will be a pinnacle moment proving that heating up a highly diminished colony can be reversed by controlling the temperature and in part the humidity or relative humidity in the brood box. So this is rather exciting. And back to the solar, getting almost complete full sun. Everything is charging, meaning the two batteries. And when this is plugged in into the inverter, I, I could just take this cover, put it on top. And now I can leave this right outside, 24 seven, come hell or high water. <laughs> and the electronics won't get affected at all. Solar panels are designed to be outside, so they won't be affected. And we got a little bit of an overhang, so rain will not pour off the roof down onto the panels. It'll run off on the, the edge.